Hey YouTube, what's up? It is Johnny Glock here. Um, this is going to be part two of this uh, series that we're doing uh, with the Gen 5. I'm looking at some of the different um, things you can do with the trigger and comparison from 4 to 3 to 5 and you know a bunch of different stuff like that. So where we left yesterday, um, I kind of maxed out what um, I was able to do with the plug and play stuff and I wasn't getting the results that I wanted to with the uh, Gen 5 configuration. Uh, I said the Gen 5 is very much like uh, the Gen 3 feel. It's the same, just about the same radius uh, on the transfer bar, uh, bird's beak. Um, it, uh, consequently, consequently um, I've heard people call the vertical extension uh, the bird's head, and that is called the shark fin. So get it together, man. That's the slang. <laughs> anyway, so uh, and uh, if you don't know what the vertical extension nomenclature is, it is the part that depresses the safety plunger. It is uh, this part right there. So that's the bird's beak. That's the shark fin. All right. Um, but um, if we're talking real Glock stuff, it's the vertical extension and just the rear of the the radius of the transfer bar. And then that's the seat, you know, that's the sear, that's the cruciform, and that's the trigger spring tail. Um, I'm sure they have other names for a bunch of the other stuff, but that's basically uh, what it is. So, um, where we left yesterday, I'm going to bring the camera down, and we talked about how inherently the the Gen 3 bar with the 3.5 combination was like, you know, hitting them ball out of the park because it you know gave you less resistance and uh, made the pool for all intents and purposes feel better um, not as much resistance and it shortened the reset so uh, that's why people loved it but after a while what would happen is you'd start and even early on if you were like a trigger if you were into triggers you'd see that uh, it got spongy you know and I can't tell you how many people have talked to you like after a while I my gen 3 started getting spongy after a while my gen 4 started getting spongy after the break-in period not that the Glock needs a break-in period functionally but everything has a break-in period you get a new motorcycle they say thousand miles um, for the break-in period everything's working together um, you know less bare 500 rounds uh, with the trigger it's gonna basically be you know the C or mating to the striker that's going to be the main kind of break-in thing. That's why if it starts out at three pounds, probably after a thousand rounds, you're going to end up at 2.5. It's usually going to half pound is going to drop um, within, and unless you send your gun to me and I'm doing the striker work or you're doing the striker work, then you know sometimes it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, you might have a little bit more break-in, but for the most part, man, it's it's broken in. If you have something that's uh, you know, uh, say say your striker lug face here is honed to uh, right there to 12,000 grit, and so is your striker, and so is your sear. Um, I've even used CBN emulsion on some of these uh, things in the micron and you know half micron. That's I think 60,000 grit or something like that. So you're talking about two super slick per, uh, surfaces. You know, the break in's broken in. Uh, and with that, you have to be careful because, you know, you don't want to break in. You have to make sure everything's on with guns like that because uh, engagement's a big part of that whole thing. And uh, that things being that slick, man, it's got to be tight. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to take the gun, I'm going to take the camera down and we're going to take a look at this kind of where we left off yesterday. And uh, this is the, first of all, clear gun, no magazine. This is the Gen 3 that we were talking about that who's, you know, like you go in there, it has this rolly sort of spongy thing. That wall is just not defined. And then you have the break. And then it breaks almost all the way back at the at back of the trigger guard. I'll bring this in. I know this might, I don't know if this is upside down for you guys or not, but it's, you can still see it very well. So even if it is upside down, you know what I'm talking about. And then your reset is, is short right there. So break short. And like I told you, after the first break, from there it kind of changes. And that's the that's you know kind of part of the striker fire system, it changes. So that's all you're doing. And you know, 
it, it, it is a wall right there, and, it, and just because you're not coming through it, it has a different feel. So you're not coming through that wall unless it's the first shot, or unless you're slapping, unless you're slapping the trigger. What they say, if you're not if you're not shooting off the reset. So as you can see, it goes pretty far back, and that's the position of the trigger. Um, another thing, you know, to take account is where your finger is on here, and the way the finger works. You know, you know, sometimes if you get breaking forward enough, you're going to be able to get, you know, faster. If you see if something's back here or up here, um, there's just different ways the, you know, the physiology works, and and I, you know. It's like Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindle cells. These are things and stretch receptors that are in the, in the in our muscles. And uh, once you go past 90, things start to switch, and it, it's all it's pretty interesting, I guess. You know, if you really want to get into shooting form, um, you know that would factor in with your isosceles and your grip and all that stuff. So, if you remember yesterday, this then the reason I showed you this trigger because this is exactly how this trigger looked yesterday because we had maxed out the plug and play. And when I say we maxed out the plug and play, I'll show you what I'm talking about. That means the set screw that I put here in the, in the um, trigger shoe and the set screw that is put in the, and these are just R&D parts, in the trigger housing, I, I I did everything I could with a bunch of different connectors and the best I could get with that plug and play was like this. It was very Gen, you can go back and review it, very Gen 3-ish with the Gen 5. So what I had to do is I had to go back and modify some things uh, that were um, metal, you know, stuff like that. I, I, I had to modify a... Um, I ended up going with a with a minus Glock connector with some modifications on it, and I actually had to modify the bar a little bit to behave like I wanted it to, and there were some interesting modifications because they were actually on the cruciform. So um, I'm going to show you how this ended, ended up coming out, and it's still not exactly where I want it. So you know, like that's the thing. You know, I, sometimes I keep these guns up to two or three weeks just to make sure that I'm uh, getting exactly what the customer wants. So you can see there's not. It's not like this one in comparison where you got the, and I'm not pushing any harder, you know, right there, there's all that. And then you could, you know, roll back with this one. It's a, you know, it's a, it's literally a dead stop wall right there. And then from there you're breaking and I, I'll take my finger off it as soon as it breaks. So you see, okay, that's being held back because that's the system. So it's broken. It's against the trigger stop that was in the housing right there. I'm going to do it again so you can see. So that's where that trigger ends as opposed to that. Okay? Which is, at the end of the day, you know, these guards are, I'm sure, similar. So uh, the position is different there. And then from here, from the reset now, and the reset was longer yesterday, if you remember, now it's just right to there. So break. Reset, break, reset. And it can feel like, you know, once I press, if I press through like that, we're good. But I'm starting to feel a little bit of uh, sometimes the the bar, and these things start to show up after a minute, not right away, but sometimes you get a tug of war in between, uh, you know, that right there, what I'm talking about right there, and the sear in the striker. So, you know, they're, they're opposing each other, and that's exactly, when you're down on my trigger and you can feel, if you get, if you get to a certain point and you're just like, see, see, it feels better now, probably because I'm racking it. You know, that's, that's another thing. But there is a small little glitch in there that if I'm doing a trigger pull, um, you'll basically see it in there because it's not my finger, it's a, it's a mechanism that I'm using. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to just back this out ever so slightly and that's going to just make it break a lot cleaner let me feel it yeah so now that is completely clean as far as I'm concerned and resetting like the, I'm, I'm not completely pleased with this reset and that's going to be the next thing I'm going to go after with this um, I wanted to I remember I couldn't find my trigger gauge yesterday 
So we're going to do that today and see exactly where this is pulling. Okay, so we're under, right, you know, right about two and a half pounds. See that? Um, and that is with a four and a half pound striker spring. Now see how it glitched there? It held a little bit. Remember I told you that mechanism sometime. So it's a little heavier there because I pulled. I didn't rack it. And let's see, because that's actually how the gun functions. Yeah, a little heavier there too. So once again, I, I, there's a couple things I still want to clean up with this trigger, but we know that we're, and that's right again at two and a half. So we're in that two and a half pound range, um, which also, which also with that four and a half pound spring, and like I said, I haven't messed, like you've seen the 4243 video where I take the actual uh, thing they're using as a trigger spring, that mechanism, and take the spring out and do some tricks to that. I still have to do that with this gun and uh, see how it turns out. Um, but, you know, at least I have other springs to mess around with to, to see how that's going to pan out. So, like I said, I only have one shot. <laughs> and, uh, it kind of ups the ante with some stuff, which is really cool in my, in, in, you know, the way I think about it. But um, I just wanted to show you that. That's part two. So, you know, we maxed out the plug and play in part one. I uh, showed you the, the how inherently the trigger has like a very Gen 3 feel, uh, which, I, which I get. Um, and then I get why they wanted to bring that back. And, they're, and, then, and now the, the dimple isn't on there. And, you know, uh, we'll hear stuff about that, I'm sure. And like I said, it's a very safe system. It's designed incredibly well for what it's supposed to be doing. Like I said, the engagement is unreal. And that's something that you have to work, that's something that I have to work with to, you know, kind of get a feel for how, you know, that, that's a big part of it. That engagement controls the speed of the brake. So uh, there's a lot of different augmentations and modifications you can make there to get that to behave the way you want to. Um, so today we kind of worked more on the position of the trigger and how I wanted to get it to break earlier and how I wanted to get it to stop earlier. And um, from there, the next video, which is more than likely gonna be tomorrow, is going to be about the reset, how we can clean that reset up not really clean it up, but just, you know, get it as short as possible. So we're, we're breaking at that, you know, 16th, 16th break, 16th reset, 16th break. So they're balanced back and forth. It just gives a type of like the finger likes that and, uh, you know, so does muscle memory. So, um, that's where we are. I'm getting another gen five in tomorrow, I think. So, uh, it'll be cool to be able to actually compare apples to apples. I'll be able to take one stock right out and, and um, compare it to this one that's going to be shortly finished. So um, that is the video for the day. And um, www.johnnyglocks.com is the website address. Get Johnny Glocks at gmail.com. Actually, wait, I have a new one too. It's uh, Johnny Custom Glocks. Johnny Custom Glocks at gmail is, a, is another email because I had to do some other things and um, 941-376-4383 uh, give me a call anytime even with questions if I have the time I'll answer and uh, I know I always say stuff about the website so I'm not going to say it anymore but something's coming all right um, you guys have a great day and take care